What's up everybody, Lane here, aka The Unjobable One, back with another video, another fucking, uh, I was about to say another podcast, but it's not really a podcast, it's just another video, <laughs> uh, of a new series here on my channel, I told you guys I was going to be doing like a booking fantasy type series, and that's what we're doing, and today, today we book Baron Corbin. Now, now, to uh, to address Stephen Larson here for a second, because I'm, I'm probably going to share this video with them. If they, if you two do watch this, just know Baron Corbin is the greatest of all time, and he will be remembered as the greatest of all time because it would be it would be me. Who would book him to be the greatest of all time? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Barry Corbin is not going to be the greatest of all time. That's obviously smoke up the damn chimney. But I am going to book Baron Corbin to be a credible threat, to be a captiva captivating performer. So let's just get right into it. And guys, like I always say in every single video, Follow me on the Twits. I live tweet during Raw, SmackDown, sometimes NXT, and pay-per-views as well. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I'm still looking into getting on iTunes and SoundCloud and Podbeam and uh, what Google Play, I think iHeartRadio, anything, any service that you can listen to podcasts on. I'm going to try to get this uh, podcast on there. <laughs> uh, so, still, that's still a whole work in progress. Um, and I will let you guys know once all that sort of happens and culminates together. Uh, but for right now, sticking to just YouTube for a minute, for this meantime, I should say. And, um, yeah, let's just get right into it. Booking Baron Corbin. So, in order to book a superstar for the future we have to look at you know what's their current standing right now what's their position within the company what's their current storyline so the main thing with Barry Corbin he's the lone wolf he is all by himself you know instead of jacking off with his group of friends he jacks off by himself in the corner alone on Saturday night so you know, that's not a good time, but hey, that's what he wants to do. So, that's his current gimmick. Um, yeah, you know, that's fine, you know, Lone Wolf, but we've seen that type of character before. They may have not been called the Lone Wolf, but they have been sort of, you know, taking on that role of, hey, I'm alone, I'm a loner, that's my thing, that's what I'm going to do. And currently... He's had some pretty good matches, to be honest. I have I have no problem with his in ring capabilities. Um, he's obviously you know he's the big guy. He does the big guy moves, and you know that's pretty standard. And as much as people probably don't like that or think it's boring or that he's just not interesting in the ring, it is a style. So you can't really be too hard pressed on that aspect of his whole packaging. Um, I actually like it. I like that they mention what did they mention? He's like gold, golden gloves champion or something like that. Former golden gloves champion or something, something along those lines it's in boxing. Basically, I don't know boxing very well. I don't watch boxing. You guys have to let me know in the comments below. Um, I like that they mentioned that every single time he, throws right hand or uh, an uppercut, uppercut or something like that. It just it, it makes it feel more uh, impactful, if you will. And uh, also, he's had he had a pretty good match. Who did he go against? I think it was uh, Dean Ambrose. He had a good match with Dean Ambrose. I think it was the main event. And uh, pretty good match, to be honest. I love his moveset. I love when he gets thrown into the corner. He, slide, he does the baseball slide out the ring. He runs around, gets back in the ring, uh, does the uh, 
he either does a clothesline or he just knocks him in the back of the head or something like that. Really good, really quick, really smooth. Uh, the Deep Six, I really like. At the End of Days is one of my... It's either one of mine or it is my favorite finisher right now, currently. Uh, I really like it. It's just it's different. Something different. Um, and so, yeah, all of that's pretty good. Uh, he's been smashing, you know, smaller guys, Kalisto. Um, I know he's, I know he, uh, he went against someone else. Oh, Dolph, uh, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, so, you know, the, the typical big guy, I squash smaller guys stuff. And then, of course, he's been having those matches with Apollo Crews, um, which is helping out Apollo Crews. And in the future, I'm going to do a booking video on Apollo Crews here because uh, I feel like he has a ton of potential and I think they want him to be a top guy. And currently they're trying to give him more complexity and more depth to his character because there's lack thereof. There's a lack thereof character. Uh, so that's good. That's all good stuff. But we're talking about Baron Corbin. So all that stuff about Baron Corbin. We all know the facts now. We all know his standing right now. And how do you book him for success? Well, let me tell you. This is how you do it. So currently he has this whole lone wolf thing, right? You use that as sort of... As sort of a, uh, I wouldn't want to say catalyst, but to kind of move away from that lone wolf thing, right? So what ends up happening, let's just say Apollo Crews is going against Baron Corbin, random match. Then all of a sudden at the end of the match or during the match, yeah, during the match, let's just say during the match. By the way, I don't have any notes whatsoever. All this is from the top of my dome. Because that's how I like to work. That's where I think the true, the best thoughts and ideals and artistry comes. is from pure instinct and everything that pops to your head. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. So, you know, writing down stuff is not really my forte. So, yeah, now that you guys know all that. Um... So yeah, Paula Cruz, Baron Corbin having a random match. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, lights go out. Maybe we have like, uh, hmm, da -da 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 -da. I'm trying to think, trying to think, trying to think. Maybe we have, okay, maybe we have like a mask show up. A mask or just either words or something like that. Um, like saying, you can't do this alone. Or something like that. Uh, I think that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do this alone. That'd be really cool. You can't do this alone. And then, you know, Baron Corbin's looking at that. All of a sudden, turns around, Apollo Crews hits him with a powerbomb. Um, and he loses because that was a distraction. And this goes on for, uh, let's say this, let's say this goes on for about three to six weeks. Three to six weeks. You know, lights keep going out, uh, images and quotes and uh, basically all referring to you can't do this alone. Basically saying you are not a lone wolf. You need someone to help you in your quest to become the best. So we get all that. We get all that for about six weeks. And then we have random match. Let's say Baron Corbin's going against Dolph or something like that. Um, and then we get lights go out. Lights come back on. Dolph is gone. And it's just Kane. Kane in the ring. Kane's in the ring. And Baron Corbin's staring at him. And then the lights go back out. And Kane is gone. So, and then Dolph is, Dolph is still not there. So that basically sets up, hey, 
yes, this is Kane that's doing all this. And he's basically trying to get Baron Corbin to embrace the darkness and hell and the fire and the flames and all that stuff. Oh, and by the way, disclaimer, this is not turning Baron Corbin into Kane to, to Kane 2.0. That's not what this is. He's not going to wear flame, flame gear, anything like that. I'm not making him Kane 2.0 because there will never be another Kane. Kane is a once in a lifetime, if you ask me. Um, so that's just a full disclaimer. So the next week on SmackDown, Barrett Corbin comes out, hopefully, after getting some promo lessons and promo practice in. Because <laughs> he's terrible on the mic. I should have mentioned that at the beginning also when I was doing the facts about Baron Corbin. He's not good on the mic. So he comes out, delivers a promo, tells my Kane, I don't need you, I don't need your help, I am the lone wolf, I do this all for me and no one else, I'm here to make money, that's what I'm here to do. And then, Kane comes out, no, lights go out, Kane is in the ring, destroys Baron Corbin, I mean demolishes him. This is the worst we've ever seen Barrett Corbin be just demolished in the ring. So, for the next, let's say, because you don't want to make the crowd, you don't want to make the crowd be bored of this constant attacking, because uh, that can get a little boring and drawn out. Um, so, for the next, let's just say, three weeks. For the next three weeks, Kane is beating the piss out of Baron Corbin. Just demolishing him. And we get this sort of sympathetic, you might sometimes get this little sympathetic feel for Baron Corbin after his beatings. Because he's starting to get to look in his eyes and in his face that do I really need his this guy's help? Or you know, is this is this really good for me? Uh should I continue to let this happen? You know, this complexity to him, which he doesn't have currently at this point. So then the next week we get a backstage segment where Maybe Baron Corbin is like, I don't know, he's in his little dungeon room, like black and red or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, and you hear a figure talking in the background, you know, saying, hey, uh, I mean, hey, not a, hey, but <laughs> like, like, uh, you know, you need the darkness, Baron, you need hell, you need the fire, you need, you know, all all this stuff to make you a monster and to make you threatening and to be, you know, a machine, go out there and destroy people and, you know, and all that type of stuff, um, you know, and it's Kane, Kane comes out, uh, probably out of focus, out of camera or whatever, and, uh, he's talking to Baron, and Baron, this whole time, just has his stoned look on his face. Just no expression whatsoever. But it almost looks like an expression. You know what I mean? How some people can give no expression, but it ends up being an expression, even of itself. It's a very complex thing. It does a little bit of that. And then um and then Bar and then Baron looks up at him and Kane just holds out a box, you know, a, a fancier looking box, not just a damn cardboard Amazon box or some bullshit like that, but like, he hands him a box, he opens it, and then he looks up at Kane, cut to black, so that's the last we see of Baron Corbin for a about, let's just say, you know, I know SmackDown doesn't have a whole lot of people, 
Um, but just, you know, take people from tag teams and put them in singles competitions and stuff like that, you know? At least get your tag teams out there, because currently the state of SmackDown, their tag team division is severely lacking in terms of being on screen. So, you know, put one of them out there while Baron Corbin's gone, because he's going to be gone for, let's just say he's gone for... You know, we don't want to do it too, too long. Let's just say he's gone for a month. How about that? A month and a half, maybe maybe even two months. Maybe three, but that'd be pushing it. Because we don't want him off TV that long. Because we want people to still have that lasting image of him opening the box and looking up at Kane and all that good stuff. Uh, we still want that fresh in the people's minds. So then, then Baron Corbin returns as this newly masked machine and I don't want it to be Kane influenced I don't want any of his gear to be Kane influenced as far as having like red and flames and stuff like that like it could be black just you know it could be just all black or uh maybe some black with shit I don't know red but like you know no flames basically don't make it Kane-esque you know make it Baron Corbin's thing even his mask make that different make that unique um and uh yeah I mean and just change up his wrestling style just a little bit just be a little bit more brutal and you know new music cause I don't I don't really like his music right now uh his entrance, as far as like walking under the lights and stuff, yeah, I mean that could still work. But instead of like, I think he has like red light, white light, red light, white light, <laughs> or something like that. It's, it's red and white lighting. Just make it a darker esque thing, like make it Kane esque, but not too much Kane esque. You know what I mean? So from that point, we have this new Baron Corman who bears the mask and he doesn't speak he doesn't and this is also a good way to get him to not do any promos because uh, his promo skills are not very good and I don't think they will improve anytime soon so this is a good way for him to not talk anymore on the mic until you know it's about that time to maybe take the mask off of him or to start letting, letting him do promos like a year or two from now or something like that once he's gotten much, much better and more comfortable at it. Um, so all this is a good thing in order to help him and to benefit him. So as far as the future booking, future success of this character, this new Baron Corbin, this new character... Um, you know, book him strong, book him like fucking Kane back in, damn, when did Kane debut? It was 19, when did he, 19, I want to say 1990, 98 ish, ish, maybe 1997. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 1997. Okay, I, was, I was a little right. I was a little right. He debuted in 1997. Book him like Kane in 1997. Just a monster. Complete monster. Completely changed. Uh, he can still do his deep six and the end of days and stuff like that. Don't give him a fucking choke slam. Um, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, and if you book him this way, I mean, he could end up being a world champion within... A year, probably after WrestleMania 33, right after WrestleMania 33. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All of this will culminate, you know, the six months leading six months leading to WrestleMania 33. That's what happens. OK, so that so that lasting image of Baron Corbin opening the box will be at WrestleMania 33. It'll be backstage segment. 
Okay, so then we don't see Baron Corbin till three months down the line. You know, stuff like that. You know, all those, all the timeline stuff can be altered for specific things. You know, maybe you can even have Baron Corbin opening the box. You know three months prior to WrestleMania. So then when he re debuts again, it can be the, the SmackDown after WrestleMania, which, you know, WWE at this point, they more so push the raw and well, now they're going to have to push the raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania. So at this point, that would probably be a better day to re-debut your new gimmick. So, you know, we could just book it like that. And, uh, yeah, he just goes on a winning streak, um, looking very strong. And, yeah, he eventually probably goes against AJ Styles or Dean or, uh, hopefully, uh, Bray, um, for the belt or anything like that. I would love to see Baron Corbin as this newly masked Baron Corbin going against Bray Wyatt. I think that'd be really cool. Um, also him against AJ Styles would be really cool because AJ always makes everyone he gets in the ring with look like a million bucks. So either way, after this, you can book Baron Corbin however you want. You know, uh, he's going to look badass. He's going to look great. Um, he's already good in the ring, personally, from what I think, from what I've seen. Um, and yeah, that's how I would book Baron Corbin for success. And I know, guys, this video is a little long. And I know I don't cut my videos down. I don't really edit them or anything like that. I keep everything in. Um, that's just because that's my style. That's how I like to roll uncut. I'm not perfect. You know, I fuck up. I might say the wrong thing here or there. You know, I leave it in for you guys because it feels normal. Uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let me know what you guys think of my booking fantasy. My fantasy booking, I mean, for Baron Corbin. Also, Stephen Larson, let me know what you guys think of this new Baron Corbin that I booked for you and for every one of my jobbers here on the Lex Talk channel. Um, I was, I was saying, um, I was saying in the description of my uh, previous raw results video that, uh, currently since I'm under a hundred thousand subscribers, I'm a jobber and all my subscribers are jobbers. And, uh, once we hit a hundred thousand, we'll all be mid carters, mid carters, and uh, once we hit a million, we'll all be uh, main eventers. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I think uh, that's a pretty cool analogy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you guys want to help me to become a mid carter, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, make sure to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy. Again, comment down below your thoughts and feelings about this. How would you book? Baron Corbin for future success and uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter where I live tweet during uh, Raw Smackdown, sometimes XT and all the pay-per-views and uh, yeah with all that being said guys I hope you all have a gorgeous day and a safe day and I will see you all right back here in the next video